Having a structured code base can only help you with creating good and long-lasting apps. The problem is that proper architecture can come with a cost of writing a lot of boilerplate code, especially if you intend to write everything from scratch. When it comes to the block pattern for Flutter, in the previous tutorial you could see how to create blocks from scratch, and I would say it's not something you want to be doing over and over again. It's just too low level. And also, if you don't know how to implement blocks from scratch, or if you haven't seen that previous tutorial, definitely check it out by clicking on the card in the corner. We simply need to move up the abstraction ladder so that we aren't going to be dealing with streams and things directly. This can be done with a handy library about which you are going to learn in this tutorial. Hello, welcome to Reso Coders. So just as in the previous tutorial about block pattern where we implemented everything from scratch, we are gonna be building the same simple app, which is just an iteration on the default Flutter app when you create new projects. So I have a new project open and this is also how the app will look once we finish this simple app at the end of this tutorial. So we can increment and decrement also so it's pretty much the same, it's exactly the same as in the previous From Scratch tutorial. The only difference is that this time we are going to be using the block library. This is the library that we are going to be using. It's Flutter Block. You can find it over at pub.dartlang.org. Just search for Flutter Block or also the link is in the video description. And we are going to install it by copying this Flutter Block and pasting it in our pubspec yaml file and also it has a nice home page with documentation so definitely if you want to learn something more about this library go ahead and check it out it's really thorough all right so as i said let's jump over to pubspec yaml and we want to paste the dependency that we just copied over here under the flutter sdk under dependencies but make sure that your indentation is proper so we don't want to paste it under flutter but we wanna paste it only under the dependencies. So shift and tab to move one step backwards and now paste it over here, hit save and Visual Studio Code will call Flutter, Flutter packages get. Once this is done, we can go ahead and create a new file for state because in this tutorial, we are going to touch the UI only after we have everything for the block set up. So now let's create new file. It's going to be called counterstate.dart. If you've watched my previous tutorial, this is something that we didn't have there. It's going to look like this and you don't necessarily need to have a counterstate class even when you are using the block library. But I feel that it's something that uh, is beneficial, especially if you don't have only one property as your state, as we do here, we only have counter. But usually you would have some response from some API, also some error. If some error happened on the way from the API, you may also store a flag whether or not the data is just currently being loaded from the server and so on. So you are probably going to have multiple properties in your state and that's when state is really necessary. So what do we have here? We have one property, as I already said. Then we also have a private constructor. And why is it private? Well, because we don't want to be able to just construct classes like that through constructors, but we want to be only able to use our factories. Currently, we have only one factory, which is for the initial state. And whenever the app starts, so that's initial state, we want the counter to be zero. So we return counter state and we create a new instance of counter state by calling its private constructor because we can call private constructors from within the class, obviously. And then we use the cascading operator and set the counter property to be zero. And I know that this could be done much more simply with just setting the counter over here to be zero since we only have the initial state. But if we were to do that, you would not be able to see how to use factories for your state 
creation. So I'm just trying to emulate how you would use state in your real app where you have multiple properties over here. So state is something that is returned from the block, but we also need to be able to pass something to the block in order for the block to decide what to do. That something which is passed into the block are events. So let's create a new file counter event.dart and we are going to have two events increment event and decrement event and they are all going to be a subclass of counter event these two events are pretty much everything we can have in a simple counter app and now comes the core of the tutorial which is the counter block itself so let's create a new file for that and over here let's first import the package for block so let's import block dot dart and now we are going to create a class counter block. And if you've seen my previous tutorial, this will look really familiar, but it's just much more simple. And that's where the library shines. Our counter block class needs to extend block. And this block will have a counter event and counter state specified because they are generic parameters. So let's specify it over here. First comes the counter event and then comes the counter state. And we need to import both of them. So let's hit control and dot. So let's import counter event and also let's import counter state. And even VS code notifies us that counter block is missing something and that something are two overridden functions. So let's override initial state and also map event to state initial state simply as it says will return the initial state and for us the initial state is simply counter state dot initial which is the factory that we have created and map event to state well this needs to be an async generator this is also the reason why it returns a stream so really the underlying implementation for this block is pretty much the same as we did ourselves but it's just hidden behind the library's code. So let's make this format nicely by adding one comma behind the counter event. And also we need to tell this to be an async generator by writing async and then the star over here or asterisk. And over here we want to have just simple if statement where if the event is increment event, we want to yield current state with the counter incremented Otherwise, so if it's decrement event, we want to yield current state with the counter property decremented. The yield keyword just emits a new element, so to say, in the stream when you have an async generator function. Then in our UI, we can listen to these new emitted states and update our UI accordingly. So we are going to do just that next. So let's again first remove all of the comments by hitting control F and then we want to search for slash slash dot and asterisk and hit also that we want to use regex and now we want to replace everything with blank space. So we get rid of the comments which we don't need and now save it. First we are interested in the my homepage state because this is where the magic happens. First we are currently setting the state inside the my homepage state, which we don't want to do. So let's delete everything regarding the state setting. And now let's create a new final property counter block. It's going to be private and it's going to be equal to new counter block. So let's import our class over here. Also, you can get the code from the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. Also, I would advise you that immediately after you create such a block, you should write the dispose function. So let's go down here and let's write dispose and we are going to dispose counter block. So we'll just call dispose on the counter block and you are good to go. You are not going to get any memory leaks. Now we want to change our UI to work with the block. So over here we have the body of the scaffold, which is now only a simple center widget with the text and with the counter text also. We want to wrap it inside a block builder. So let's hit control dot on the center widget. We want to wrap it with a new widget. It's going to be block builder. Now let's cut the center widget from here. And the block builder doesn't have a child. It rather has a block, which we need to specify. 
and the block will be our counter block. And also, if you are waiting to see how to get the counter block through inherited widget, just wait till the end of this tutorial where I am going to cover it. But now, just for simplicity, as we are starting, we are going to get the reference directly from our property, which is inside this very class. After the block, we also need to specify the builder, which is a function which gets a context and also counter state. So let's import counter state over here. And this function will simply return the center widget. So let's write it over here and semicolon at the end. Let's format it properly. And now all we have to do is to replace this counter with state dot counter because state contains our counter property. Oh, and also we need to import block builder. So let's do just that. And yeah, so once we have that, we have just one problem. And that is that we have only one floating action button for incrementing. And even that is not going to work now because it calls a method which is now deleted. I'm not going to bore you here with creating the second floating action button. If you want to learn how to do that, you can check out my previous tutorial. And also the link is in the video description, which is going to take you to the code from this tutorial. All right, so now we have two floating action buttons here and we just need to implement their unpressed callbacks. What we can do here is to get the block and then we can simply call dispatch and dispatch the event that we want to dispatch. So over here we would dispatch increment and from the decrement button we are going to dispatch decrement event. But I don't really like this because you are just adding unnecessary information to your UI classes. What I would suggest you to do is to create functions inside the block directly. So let's scratch this dispatch call and rather go over to counter block, create an increment and also on decrement functions. And now from your UI, just simply call here counter block dot on increment. And from the decrement button, we are going to call counter block dot decrement or on decrement. All right, so let's run this app inside our emulator and we can see that this app now works just fine. We can increment and also decrement. But now let's tackle the problem with the block provider, which is the inherited widget. So imagine that you don't have everything inside one state or inside one widget directly. Imagine that your code gets too clunky and you need to separate it into multiple different widgets. We're going to simulate that situation by creating a new class for the scaffold. So let's hit control and dot and let's hit extract widget. Its name will be simply counter widget. And you can see how VS Code refactored this widget for us. It passes it the counter block object. But this is not a good practice because imagine that you have a really deeply nested widget tree then you would need to pass the counter block to every single widget inside that tree of widgets. And that would get pretty messy really soon. So we don't want to pass the counter block over here. We are going to delete it. And we are also going to delete it from the constructor of the counter widget and also from here. And also again from the constructor where now it shows us an error. The only thing that remains basically constant in a tree of widgets is the build context. So now we will not be able to somehow package our block together with the build context. And for that, we can use inherited widget or a wrapper on top of inherited widget, which is block provider. And it's especially suited for blocks. So now inside the build function of our my homepage state, we are going to return first copy this counter widget and now return block provider. Its block is counter block and its child is our widget. So just paste it over here. It's our counter widget. And now we also want to change all of the references to counter block directly to get the counter block from the block provider. And we can do that really simply by just writing block provider off and specify the type which we want to get that is counter block and pass in the context. Now we can just copy this and paste it everywhere where we are trying to do something with the counter block. So here and here. And now when we 
hit Control F5 for save and then hit Control F5 to hard restart the app, we can see that it still works just fine. Alright, and that's it for this tutorial. If you don't want to miss more tutorials from Flutter like this, definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are not going to miss any of my new videos. If this video helped you with understanding the block and also the block library, definitely give it a like and also share it. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, if you have any suggestions or questions. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.